that you said was a great doctor in that video that you retweeted last night said that masks don't work and there is a cure for COVID-19, both of which health experts say is not true. She's also made videos saying that doctors make medicine using DNA from aliens and that they're trying to create a vaccine to make you immune from becoming religious. Well, maybe it's the so, same, maybe it's not, but I, I, can't, I can tell you this. That. She was on air along with many other doctors they were big fans of hydroxychloroquine. And I thought she was very impressive in the sense that from where she came, I don't know which country she comes from, but she said that she's had tremendous success with hundreds of different patients. And I thought her voice was an important voice, but I know nothing about her. Masks don't work. Yeah, last, last week, you said masks. Last week, well, real quick. Last okay. week, you said Thank masks. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. All right, so there, uh, an abrupt end. Uh, our own Caitlin Collins asking uh, some serious questions of the president. Uh, he's had enough. He walks out. Uh, he's strongly, of course, defending what he's defended now for months, hydroxychloroquine, a drug that even his own uh, FDA has decided should not necessarily be used uh, to treat uh, even early stages of the coronavirus, good for, uh, for maybe for lupus, uh, for other diseases, but not for that, because potentially it could cause some serious heart-related problems for various patients, uh, and as a result, the FDA, FDA has revised its earlier recommendation to maybe give it a shot. They don't want to do it, but the president, very determined to support, very determined to make the case for hydroxychloroquine. And uh, Caitlin Collins is there in the briefing room for us. Caitlin, you were asking important questions, uh, uh, and even uh, some of the president's retweets overnight, uh, they were taken off Twitter, for example, because they were suggesting it's, there's no need to wear a mask, and they were suggesting hydroxychloroquine could potentially, quote, cure, cure coronavirus when there's absolutely no evidence of that. Well, well, not only that, the video was removed from Twitter, it was removed from Facebook, and it was removed from YouTube. Unfortunately, after it had been viewed millions of times, and that's because they said there was misinformation in those videos that were elevated by the president. And the one he was citing, there was a woman in the video, she identifies herself as a doctor, and well, she says that masks do not work, and she says there is a cure for COVID-19. Of course, two things that health experts have said is not true, and so I was asking the president about that. She's also made a host of bizarre other claims, including saying that scientists are trying to come up with a vaccine to prevent you from being religious, things of that nature. And so I asked the president what was the logic in elevating a post like that to 84 million followers of his on Twitter, and he was defending it. He was saying that he didn't know where the doctor was from, but he was talking talking about how she was citing her personal experience with hydroxychloroquine in patients. Though, of course, we don't actually know how that was used or anything like that. That's why the video was removed. But then also, Wolf, by the president retweeting that, it's contradicting what he has said in the last seven days, which is he was saying that people should be wearing masks, that they do work, and that they are helpful in stopping the spread of COVID-19. But as I was trying to ask that question, the president turned and left the briefing room. It's not clear why he would retweet something if he wasn't going to defend tweeting that. But it was just a question that many people have because, you know, is he going against the advice of his doctors and instead elevating the opinions of these other people that are not people who work in the administration are not working on the COVID-19 response? And uh, so that was the question that we had for the president. He was also asked about those retweets about Dr. Fauci overnight, one saying that he was a fraud, another accusing him of misleading the country, something that we saw Dr. Fauci responded to today. He was saying he had not read those tweets or hadn't seen them where it said that Fauci had misled the public, but he said that he wanted to talk about how Fauci's approval ratings are so high, and he asked why his to the response of the coronavirus pandemic are not. He said he was confused by that because they're both working in the administration. Though, of course, that has been something that people have pointed out to the president, saying that people t trust Dr. Anthony Fauci more than they trust the president. And that's raised questions. And of course, we had reporting that he had been watching Anthony Fauci's poll numbers. He was irritated by them. And he made that pretty clear in his answer here in the briefing room. He certainly did. And, and, and let me uh, stand by, Caitlin. I want to bring Dana Bash into this conversation on Dr. Fauci. Uh, clearly, the president uh, uh, seems to be a bit jealous uh, of Dr. Fauci. He said at one point, the president, he has a high approval rating. Why don't I? Uh, and then he said, nobody likes me. Uh, uh, he seems to be, uh, as we all know, he's very interested in approval ratings. He's very interested in ratings in general. Uh, but to make that point about Dr. Fauci, he has a high approval rating. Why don't I? That actually just happened in the White House briefing room. The president of the United States making abundantly clear 
that he is not happy with the fact that the top one of the top medical professionals during a pandemic has a high approval rating. The fact that that is not only front and center in his mind, but it, to the point where he actually feels that he has to utter it, whether he thinks he's being cute or not, is remarkable. And it really says so much. As Caitlin said, it's not as if this is a news flash to us because we understand that that is in large part driving uh, the, uh, the tension between them, despite the fact that both men have insisted they have a good relationship. It, it seems to have driven the president to last week lie in the White House briefing room saying that he was uh, invited to and would give the first pitch at Yankee Stadium next month when uh, he apparently did that because he didn't like the fact that Anthony Fauci was doing just that here in Washington at National Stadium. So it really is such a window. You know, generally we get the president's tweets as a window into what he is thinking, and Caitlin did a remarkable job in calling him out on it, and obviously he didn't want to be called out, which is why he walked out of the room. But the fact that the president, you know, through the Q&A process today, veered from what was scripted for him and gave us his innermost thoughts is very, very telling, never mind, you know, disturbing, uh, because that is not where the focus should be. It should be on him allowing and wanting Anthony Fauci to be out there. Yes, he said Fauci represents the administration and therefore it reflects well on him, but that's not what he meant. Yeah, I mean, when he ad libs and he's just answering questions, you get a very different tone from the president. Early in the briefing, he was making important steps about domestic production of pharmaceutical pro products, announcing a new agreement with Kodak to launch a new program, $765 million federal loan, all of that very important. And at the end, he repeated what is uh, significant in terms of various steps to deal with uh, the coronavirus. Uh, but John Harwood, you're our White House correspondent. Uh, that all of a sudden responds to the questioning. He gets uh, very sensitive about the, quote, high approval rating for Dr. Fauci. Uh, why don't I get that? Uh, why does nobody, and then he says, nobody likes me. Uh, that's a pretty extraordinary statement from the president of the United States, because as I said, he seems to be a bit jealous of uh, the nation's top infectious disease expert. Wolf, let's be honest. The president in the middle of a deadly pandemic with 4 million cases, over 150,000 uh, Americans dead, is functioning at the level of a child, and not even a child who's really connected to reality. He uh, retweeted all that nonsense from this kooky person who was made all these claims about hydroxychloroquine. All the medical experts have debunked uh, the assertions that hydroxychloroquine is some kind of a cure. And even as the president is trying, has, has uh, been goaded by his aides into uh, trying to strike a more uh, realistic assessment of the situation, he cannot resist repeating uh, his promotion of this uh, uh, completely unproven medication. Um, not to mention the uh, absurd statements like much of the country is corona free. Uh, we, cases uh, are indeed coming down somewhat, or uh, the, the rise in cases has been tempered somewhat in some of the hottest spots. But we still have more than 55,000 cases a day, 1,000 people dying a day, and the president's complaining that people don't like him. It is, it's profoundly disturbing that this is the kind of leadership the country, or lack of leadership, that the country is getting from the White House in a crisis of this magnitude. Yeah.